Welcome to the Osimo Early Bird Podcast. It's your old pal Emac coming to you with one Adam Ship My Money Share as we get ready for a split slate here on Thursday. Adam, talk to us, man. How are the new digs? I'm enjoying it. It'll be nice once I actually get a desk. It was supposed to come today, and for whatever reason, I didn't get it. So I'm stuck working in my kitchen, which is pretty uncomfortable because like the counter is taller than my chair, so uh, it kind of just makes my back hurt like shit. But um, other than that, everything's good. Um, enjoying the view of the, the harbor, enjoying all the bars around. You've only been there a couple days, and you're enjoying, enjoying all the bars? Look at you. Always the professional, Adam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we've got a split game slate here. Uh, it looks like everybody is sort of ignoring the 3 o'clock game. So we'll go uh, game by game, just focusing on the pitchers here. DraftKings is running from noon until 2.20, so that will be seven games. FanDuel is running a very early slate and then a 2 o'clock only slate. Uh, let me see. On their early slate, they are running the first five games, and then they're running a turbo of the two 2 o'clock games. Yahoo is focusing on the 7 o'clock games, though they do have a contest going off there at 12-10 with all of the players in the player pool. Reminder, Yahoo is a presenting sponsor here of the Early Bird Podcast. Check them out. Go to the uh, Spotlight Hitters and Stacks article, which is free every day on Osmo over there on the homepage or under the baseball uh, header. Check it out. Third paragraph will give you the link and instructions on how you can claim $30 in Yahoo Sports Rewards points with your initial deposit bonus by using the promo code Osmo and coming in on said link. Adam, let's look at our first game here. We've got uh, some residual weather coming on. Um, just sort of, it's going to be one of those where we're going to have to wake up and check things out. The one game that does stand out as potentially having some of those Midwest lingering storms uh, will be Kansas City. Uh, we'll also want to keep an eye on St. Louis. Things should uh, be a, not quite as bad uh, on Thursday as they were Wednesday nights, where that game is uh, looking like a late start. But let's start off with the San Francisco Giants, New York Mets. We have Sean Anderson, who escaped in his last outing, going against Zach Wheeler. Boy, I have a feeling you're going to be talking about Weave, uh, Wheeler quite a bit here. We have a six, or pardon me, a 3.3 implied run total here for San Francisco. Wheeler is checking in at 10,500 on DK. He is 10,200 on FanDuel, and those are tops uh, for those sites. And then over there on Yahoo, got to scroll down a little bit. He is uh, right in the mid pack at 4,100. Pardon me, 41 dollars. What would you like to do here with Wheeler in one of his better matchups, not named the Marlins? Yeah, I mean, I, I like Wheeler quite a bit here. He's he's a good pitcher. I don't think he's like to the point where he's he's great yet. He still, you know, kind of grades out above average, but not spectacular and things like um, called strike plus swinging strike percentage, two strike percentage. Um but he has a 26.7% strikeout percentage this season. 7.4% walk percentage is, is nice. He struck out 31.7% of lefties, which really stands out when you're talking about a Giants lineup or projected lineup that has six left-handed hitters in it plus a pitcher. I think it's a, a pretty advantageous spot for Wheeler. He is priced up for the matchup, but especially in cash games, he's someone that I would be looking to get to. All right, Wheeler is uh, averaging almost three DK points per game more than Noah Syndergaard and just uh, four-tenths of a point less than Jacob deGrom. Just putting that out there. That's uh, for this season, folks. Uh, on the other side here, you do have Sean Anderson. He is at uh, 6,900 nice. on DraftKings. He's coming off an intriguing performance. He went seven innings, allowed two earned runs, uh, one homer, uh, six total base runners, four strikeouts. He did go 105 pitches, which is a high for him amongst his first four starts here. And it seems like we're getting on a on a per pitch basis at least a reasonable value on uh, DraftKings because, of course, we do have to start two pitchers. I don't really want to mess around with him on Yahoo, uh, on FanDuel, but he is 6,600. So you can do that and get all of the bats that you uh, your heart desires. And then on uh, Yahoo, I think he's going to be a really good play at $28. That is just $3 off of the minimum, which will enable you to get uh, one of the other top plays on the slate, such as Burlander, who's not going to be on this uh, earlier uh, slate for most sites, or Pat Corbett, 
So that would be an intriguing way for you to uh, kind of average down your pitchers. How are you feeling about Sean Anderson? He's okay. Um, I, I like the Yahoo price tag. He's you know near minimum there. He did get to 105 pitches in his last start, which is really good to see. That's his second start where he's gone over 90 pitches, uh, 96 in his first start, and then 105 last start. So uh, that was good to see. The Mets aren't a great matchup. They're not the worst matchup either. There is some left-handed power in the lineup that could give him some issues, but um, kind of a middle-of-the-road matchup. So I don't think that I – have a ton of I, I don't really have a ton of interest on non-yahoo sites but um on yahoo at that price tag i think it's pretty appealing all right uh let's continue on here our next game we have the atlanta braves in pittsburgh taking on the pirates you have mike fultonevich at 8500 here on dk chris archer at 7700 archer has been just a major disappointment this season he continues to uh just struggle last season we thought it was because he was hurt this season uh he's had four good starts and four awful starts he is coming off a reasonably good start though he did allow two home runs uh to milwaukee he did get uh, 21 dk points four total earned runs uh just seven base runners he has allowed uh, 10 home runs across his nine starts on the season not horrible but he's still coming in with uh, just shy of a 5.7 era and just shy of a 1.5 whip 7700 though Adam, that's uh, intriguing price savings there on DK. Yeah, I mean, it's a decent price point, but it's a it's a tough matchup against Atlanta. They don't strike out a lot. They have a lot of good hitters. Archer's still walking a lot of guys, and I don't know, he's just not yeah. that good. Um, I, I think that in that price range, there's at least one guy that I, I definitely prefer to him. Um so, yeah, I, I don't think I'll get to a lot of Archer just because the matchup's pretty scary. All right. On the other side, we have Mike Fultonevich. Uh, we know lefties tend to get to him just a little bit, but uh, Pirates don't – I mean, I guess they have some. The only guys that are really worrisome somewhat are Josh Bell, who's having a nice uh, breakout season. Colin Moran uh, definitely hits for power, but he that's really about all he does. And then, you know, we'll have to see where Brian Reynolds or Adam Frazier or Gregory Polanco are. Two of them will probably be towards the top of the lineup, but they've been doing a lot of moving around with those guys, depending on the uh, opposing matchup or whatever uh, names they're drawing out of a hat each morning to make their uh, lineup. What uh, are your thoughts here with Mr. Fultonevich? Yeah, I mean, I think that he's better than he was earlier in the season. His fastball velocity has been up, but it's not a great matchup against the Pirates team that doesn't strike out a ton. Uh, Fulton is is okay. I mean, he's not someone where I'd be, you know, rebuilding lineups if I if I got to him. The Pirates aren't the scariest offense in the world, but um, I, I just think that I would rather find money for Wheeler or, or save money and go somewhere else for the most part. All right, uh, let's continue on here because we still have many choices. Uh, we know Daniel Norris is going for Detroit. Detroit is hosting the Tampa Bay Rays, finishing up their series. I do not see a listed starting pitcher on our usual sites here for Tampa Bay. Um, do you have uh, fan graphs up? Do they have anybody? I do have fan graphs up. Jalen Beeks have... looks like he might be the yeah. reliever, but... Yeah, they have Stanek and Beeks. Okay, there we go. So that's probably why some of the sites do not have them. Uh, let's see, where is uh, – I'll look on – Beaks is 38 on Yahoo. That does not seem overly appealing. Uh, what is he on DK? He's 76 on DK. Any consideration there for uh, Beaks? He has gone uh, – his last outing was 46 pitches, but the two prior to that were 91 and 83 uh 47 50 84 75 66 so it's it's not unheard of for him to go uh you know 60 70 pitches but there is definite uh risk of the bottom dropping out of his opportunity but this is a great matchup for most pitchers going against detroit uh talk to me about the probable opener and the probable long reliever yeah i'm not, I'm not really interested in tampa bay pitching here you just have i mean obviously no interest in stanick but uh, Beeks, the pitch count's just all over the place. And he's priced to where if we knew we were going to get 90 pitches, he would be viable. It's not like he would be a slam dunk play or anything. And the fact that there's you know some percentage of the time where he's not going to get close to that pretty much just takes him out of play for me. All right. On the other side, we do have the aforementioned Daniel Norris, 5,800. Tampa Bay, uh, somewhat intriguing uh, of a team. They do have a Willie Adamas. 
Uh, he wasn't he the guy that hit the grand slam the other night? Maybe I think so. Uh, Avisel Garcia, Tommy Pham's been dealing with the sore back. They said he was going to be available off the bench the last couple games. We'll have to see. Uh, we can't really rule out a disabled, uh, pardon me, an injured uh, list trip in his near future. But uh, Daniel Norris, fifty eight hundred, that'll help us get some bats. Do you want to dance with Tampa Bay? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I'm not advocating for Norris like he's a great player or anything, but. 5,800 on DraftKings, you know, on the two pitcher site where Sean Anderson's $1,100 more, you know, Norris is someone that I could see getting to just to, to help me get some more bats. Um, it's a Tampa Bay lineup that has a lot of power also has a lot of strikeouts. So there's at least a path to Norris having a good game. You know, it's not a, it's not a play that you make with confidence. It's just a price play. And, you know, you hope that you get out of it alive. All right. So he is, uh, Norris is $1 less at 27 than Sean Anderson at 28. I'm assuming you would just unequivocally go with Sean Anderson at that point? Um, no. I mean, I, I think they're close. I'd probably end up just kind of splitting it. Like, okay. I don't think Anderson's that good either. Okay. All right. Oh, I, was just, I was just looking for perspective there. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I mean, it's – it's they, they're both matchups where they're facing teams that have some power and some strikeouts. They're both very mediocre pitchers. Uh, I don't really have a strong preference between either one. Um, if I had to go – yeah, I mean, if I had to choose one, I guess I would go Norris just because we have a longer track record of him being a mediocre pitcher. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if that was the rousing endorsement for them, I cannot wait until our next one. Danny Duffy uh, will be going against Boston. Never an easy task. He is at 7,900. Uh, this is a day game after a night game. So while it's hard to see much of a watered-down lineup from Boston, it would not be a great shock if Betts, Martinez, Bogertz, or Devers, one uh, or two of those guys, ran, uh, managed to get the day off. So uh, let's talk about Danny Duffy here for a second. 7,900 on DK is really uh, the only spot I'm uh, interested in him, I wouldn't fight anybody uh, over taking him on Yahoo at 32. But the thing is, you still have several other good pitchers in the evening slate. So I would go with someone like Tyler Skaggs or Mike Fires, who are going against each other. Joey Lucchese uh, was four dollars more going against uh, Washington uh, in San Diego. I, I would look to those guys before I went to Duffy. But on the sites with the early games, where does Duffy stand for you amongst our choices? Not really interested. Uh, he's actually been pretty decent against right-handed hitters this year. He's held him to a 328 expected Woba, 157 expected ISO. Those numbers are fine, but he's only struck out 17%. And he's facing a lot of righties in this lineup that are difficult to strike out and are just really good hitters. It, it would be one thing if we were getting a huge discount and getting him at like 6K or something. But you're basically pay, paying full freight for Danny Duffy, and he's facing the Red Sox. So I'm not really interested. Oh, is that why your desk wasn't delivered? You forgot to pay full freight. Yes. Ba -dum -bum! <laughs> there we go. Yeah, and then everybody has just turned off the podcast. Well, I'm sad. <laughs> I'm sad that they've done that because they're not going to get to hear your take on Ryan Weber, who is pitching for Boston. He is at 6,300 going against the Royals here. Uh, mediocre at best. Uh, sort of applies to him on the season. He has a grand total of 18 innings pitch, 13 strikeouts. Uh, he's got a 4.5 ERA, which means he is allowing uh, a run every other inning. I really am not excited about uh, Weber. Have you done any deep looks into him from his minor league days? I haven't dug in deep. Um, what, from what I remember, he's completely not exciting whatsoever. Um, I'm pulling his fan graphs page back up now to make sure that I'm remembering correctly, but uh, – He's almost 29 years old, 22nd round pick in 2009. Um, never posted big strikeout numbers in the minors. Projects, Steamer hasn't projected for less than six strikeouts per nine innings. Uh, really nothing to see here, I don't think. This is a game where I'm most interested in bats. All right, so he's been in the minors in parts of 11 seasons. That's wow. really all you need to say. He's been in the minors for parts of 11 seasons. He has pitched in the independent league uh, four of the last five seasons. So there we are. There we are. That's all the analysis I needed to see. Congratulations on his uh, six-inning shutout that he's going to throw yeah. against uh, Kansas City here. 
Uh, moving along, we've got uh, our another another one o'clock game here. Uh, then our two two o'clock games. Uh, we've got uh, Cincinnati Reds in St. Louis taking on the Cardinals. Tyler Molle going against the mostly righty lineup that uh, actually has uh, with Matt Weeters. They're definitely turning in a little more a lefty uh, action here, but uh, we'll have to see day game after a night game. Uh, but we probably will see Carpenter. Potentially Fowler or Weeders. I'd be surprised if we saw both. And then probably Colton Wong. So I'm thinking we'll get three lefties uh, in this lineup. Uh, Molly has been just about as bad as Anthony Descalfani against lefties. Uh, what is are your thoughts for him going against the Cardinals, who are carrying a 4.6 implied run total, and it will be 83 degrees out there at noon for their local start? Yeah, give me a bunch to Tyler Molly here. Uh, he's a pitcher that I really believe in. I believe in his stuff. I think that he's a lot better than he gets credit for. If you look at stats like called strike plus swinging strike percentage, he's 14th in all of base, all, among all starters that have thrown at least 750 pitches. That puts him between Aaron Nola and Luis Castillo, uh, slightly ahead of Marquez, Carrasco, Paddock, Syndergaard, you know, guys that are really recognized as, as good pitchers. Uh, he has a, a respectable PCRA. Uh, PCRA. Um, his two strike percentage is, is fine. It's not anything earth shattering, but it's not bad. Uh, he's just, uh, I think, a pretty good pitcher. And especially against right handed hitters, he struck out 31% of righties this year. He's allowed a 279 expected Woba, 138 expected ISO. He's allowed some power to lefties um, and only has a 20.2% strikeout percentage. But I think that he's even made some improvements there. If you look at heat maps year over year, he's doing a better job of, of locating his fastballs in on lefties and, and getting it on their hands. Um, so I think that maybe you see even an improvement there. But it's a lot of good right. It's a lot of good hitters for the Cardinals, a lot of good right-handed hitters. But uh, Molly's just been really, really good against them. You're getting him outside of, of Cincinnati, which is appealing. And I don't expect Weeders to be in the lineup. I expect it to be their backup catcher, uh, Andrew Nizer, Nizer, Nizer. Uh, he's a right-handed hitter. He's a he's the team's number two prospect according to Fangraphs, but he's a right-handed hitter, so um, that plays in Molly's favor as well. Sorry, I just want to look. How? All right, I was trying to figure out how much longer uh, Yachty's going to be out. Uh, so he's not. Uh, he's out with a, a sore or a injured thumb. He is hurt the tendon. He has been out basically, what, for about eight days right now. Uh, but he's definitely going to be out longer than the minimum. Stay on the injured list. So, huh, interesting. I hadn't realized uh, that it was going to be a much longer stay uh, than first thought. But uh, that would be, explain why we're seeing so much Matt Weeders. Uh, let's talk about my favorite pitcher. That would be Miles Mikolas. I think that's how we need to pronounce his name from going here forward. The Lizard King, Miles Michaelis. Uh, intriguing matchup against the Reds. They are running a relatively balanced lineup, but it is not that terrifying. Joey Votto definitely on the wrong side of the aging curve and power curve. Not that he ever really possessed a lot of power. Uh, Yasio Puig, of course, our mileage may mer may vary. Uh, Derek Dietrich and Jesse Winker are playing prominent roles. That's probably not something we expected at the beginning of the season. They're both uh, exhibiting some power there, but I still got to side with Nicolas on this one. Uh, what are your thoughts? he's where he's cheap it's fine like he's just a good point per dollar play he'll eat some innings he's not a terrible pitcher he doesn't get strikeouts which is something that i hate in dfs especially when a pitcher is going to be popular but it's not a great reds offense and he's good enough at getting outs that i think it's 6700 on DraftKings. he's fine if you're looking to target against him though look to left-handed power uh Derek dietrich jesse winker or even joey votto um michaelis is or michaelis has struggled with. <laughs> you did it yeah. Michael has struggled with uh, <laughs> looking the power since coming over. My work here is done. It has been a good day. It has been a good day. Okay, we got uh, two more to go here. Clearly, I need to go to bed shortly, but uh, our two o'clock games, the Miami Marlins going against the Milwaukee Brewers. Marlins implied 3.4 implied run total. I've seen Brandon Woodruff as the starter on a couple sites. I'm assuming that's who it is going to be, Adam. Uh, on the other side, we have Caleb Smith. Uh, Caleb Smith, someone who is intriguing. We do like him at home. We are paying full price, but the strikeout upside uh, that may not exist for some of these other pitchers that you've discussed it is there with him 
Uh, let's start off with Caleb Smith, and I'm going to see if I can confirm Woodruff here. I think Smith's an interesting tournament play. It's a dangerous matchup against Milwaukee, especially going into Milwaukee. But I expect, and again, you know, it's it's early. I don't have baseline projections to do this off of or anything. But my my guess is that Zach Wheeler is going to be the guy that people want at the top, just because you know you're talking about a 3.3 implied run total for the Giants compared to uh, 4.7 for the Brewers. And in tournaments, especially you know where Wheeler's more expensive, like on DraftKings, you get an $1,100 discount from him to Caleb Smith. Caleb Smith has the highest strikeout percentage on the slate by a lot at 33.8%. He has been really, really good this season. He has some concerns, like he gets pulled too early sometimes, and it's a tough matchup. But um, I, I'm always a fan of getting the highest strikeout pitcher on the slate or the best strikeout pitcher on the slate at lower ownership. And I think there's a pretty good chance that ends up being the case here. All right. So for the Brewers, we're not entirely sure who is going to start yet because they have Freddie Peralta available. So they're saying that with Chassin and um, you know, who was the other guy that got hurt? I'm blanking on that. Gio Gonzalez uh, out. Uh, he's going to be coming back in. But they had him piggybacking for a while there, didn't they, Adam? Did Peralta, they, yeah. yeah, they put a they were putting an opener there in front of him. So that uh, so it could be Peralta or it could be Woodruff. Uh, Woodruff would be on enough rest that it, that it could be him. But if they're going to slot Peralta in, this would probably be the spot to do it against Miami, uh, which of course will make him potentially intriguing. Let's see what he is. He is seven thousand on DK, and let's see what he is on Yahoo. He is 25 on Yahoo. I got to say that that would be interesting if he's in there and we get 50, 60 pitches from him, Adam. Yeah, I mean, if that's the case, I at, at near minimum price, that's fine. All right. Uh, if it's Woodruff, how are you feeling about that? He's a little more uh, spendy on DK. He is uh, 8,900. And then on the old Yahoo, he is 47. I would really like Woodruff if he starts this game. He has the second highest strikeout percentage on the slate at 28.3%. Walk percentage is low. XFIP's 3.62. Everything looks really good for him. It's a good matchup against Miami, even though they did just light up uh, Chase Anderson, and they're in the midst of following that up with a good outing uh, or a good game against Jimmy Nelson as well. But, you know, it's still a team that doesn't have the best hitters. And Brandon Woodruff has been very good this season, you know, across you know a lot of metrics, uh, just named a couple of them. But um, against right-handed hitters this year, he has a, almost a 30% strikeout percentage with no power allowed. So um, if it is Woodruff, then I like him a lot. All right. Oh, now I want to see. What a – oh, interesting. Yeah, Miami. Who to thunk it? Who to thunk it? Uh, Slip and Jimmy, not going to get paid, nor are his owners tonight. Uh, that's a fun little episode of Breaking Bad where they have Slip and Jimmy, or they talk about him. I haven't seen the whole series, so I've seen that one, though. Um, all right, last game of the night. Oh, we do have some breaking news here, Adam. Uh, it was not that long ago that the Chicago Cubs came to an agreement with free agent closer Craig Kimbrell, who will be joining their team. He is the uh, current active saves leader with 333, 14th all-time. So uh, just putting that one out there. In today's game, we have uh, Pete Lambert, who I have literally no no idea no idea what to say about him and jose quintana quintana interesting in that he's 7500 we know we usually get a decent uh, shot at a quality start from him he will have to face some really good righties here in story arenado etc but uh looks like we have the wind blowing in slightly at uh, six to eight miles an hour along with a mid 60s first pitch temperature so Quintana could be uh, interesting as an sp2 at the $7,500 price point uh, thoughts on him and thoughts on Pete Peter Lambert Lambert I gotta go look him up now yeah Quintana I think's fine I would put him behind Molly as far as upside goes I put him probably behind Michaelis in terms of uh, point per dollar projection but it's not a terrible matchup if he can get around Story and, and Arenado. He's uh, an okay pitcher. I don't think he's great. I don't think he's bad. Uh, so he's he's right in there. And like I, I would put him ahead of Archer. I'd rather get Quintana in the spot than Archer against the Braves. Um, as far as Lambert goes, the number three prospect in the Rockies system, according to Fangraphs, not a high strikeout percentage in AAA last year or so far this year. Steamer projects him for less than seven Ks per nine. It's not a 
great strikeout matchup against the Cubs. A lot of good hitters here. Um, I don't think I'll be getting to much of him. All right. Uh, I was just pulling up his baseball reference. He has 510 uh, minor league seasons. Uh, or pardon me. That's innings. a lot of seasons. Yes, that would be a tremendous number of seasons. He would he would be a Highlander if he pitched that many seasons. But he's got, uh, let's see, he started out when he was 18, uh, worked his way through rookie ball, AA+, plus, uh, double-A and triple-A each of the last uh, couple years. He's been flirting with triple-A. He's been a triple-A Albuquerque, the isotopes, baby. He has, uh, let's see, 11 starts. He's got uh, 5.1 uh, impl- or earned run. Don't worry about that as much. That's in the PCL plus Albuquerque is uh, a park that is definitely favors hitters. Uh, so yeah, not horrible, but nothing really to do cartwheels over uh, in this one, but probably better than making his debut in Coors Field. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's true. It's just that I don't know, like his strikeouts just aren't exciting and the Cubs aren't an easy matchup. Well, somebody once said that strikeouts are fascist. I need to throw some ground balls. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Crash Davis, words to live by. Uh, I think that's going to do it here for us, Adam, on this Thursday slate. Remember, you guys will get the DFS strategy show, and they will cover uh, all the games there. You're going to get uh, the deep dive article that's behind the paywall. If you use promo code EARLYBIRD, all one word, you can get 50% off any one-month package of Awesome Plus. That is the new premium content offering. I think there might even be a deal off the double check, but I think there's a deal where you get 50% off a one week trial if you use that promo code. So definitely give that one a gander. You can follow Adam at ship my money DFS. I am at EMAC DFS. Tune into the deeper dive around five o'clock as well as live before lock around six o'clock to get all of the late slate action. With that gamers, good luck. <laughs>